Hello Facebook. Welcome to uh, today's free Facebook live session. The theme of today is fan <laughs> Fanville Fundamentals. We will be starting from the very beginning when you get a set of Fanvilles or if you're very new to them or if you have Fanvilles but you have not used them for a while. What to do with them, how to dance with them and how I prepare my Fanvilles and myself before restarting a dance. We will also be doing a silk ironing party. So even if you don't have any fan veils, but you have veils, hi, who's there? Hello, hello, welcome. So even if you don't have any fan veils, but you would like to iron your silk veil, you can join me. Hi, Marianne, welcome. Welcome to my ironing party. All you need is an ironing board and a regular iron. And uh, for those who asked about this, if I iron silk, it's a natural fiber, so it cannot burn, it cannot melt. You can just use a regular setting. For me, that would be two dots, <laughs> two dots, which is pretty hot and um, it will not burn the silk. You don't have to worry about that. But for fan veils, do take care that you don't iron on the fan itself because the glue might melt and then you have to re-glue them, which is not a super disaster. But if you are in a rush, it may, <laughs> it may throw you off. Hi Miko, welcome, welcome. So if you are ready to begin, we'll begin. Um, for those of you still getting your iron up, firing your iron up, you can do that right now because I'll talk about the fans for a moment. Hi Priska, hi Liver. So I got myself a set of new fan veils, especially for this occasion. I thought it was a good excuse. I have not bought many fans this year because there were no uh, performance opportunities. Yes, 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 yes. For some of you, this might be the first time ironing your fan veils. Hi, hi, welcome, Gary. And um, hi, Priska. Oh, I already saw you. <laughs> and um, some of you might already have fan veils, but have not ironed them yet. And I perfectly understand this. When I started dancing with fan veils, I knew I had to iron my silk veils, but I was a bit worried about ironing the fans. I thought I might destroy them. But then, once I did it, the the difference it made in how the fans moved, how well they opened and closed, which are two of the things that most people struggle with, um, there was no way back. So once I did it, I was hooked. And the good thing is, if you iron your set of fans once, so the first time, it's the most important. After that, it's just a bit of maintenance. So today it might take a bit longer. I will start with one and see how far I get <laughs> within the time. Um, but hopefully I, I get to do two. So these are just simple fan wheels. Not too fancy, I buy them in Germany because it's cheaper for uh, shipping. If I would perform with fans and I want a specific color scheme, I think I would, um, I would buy maybe a fancier set or a set that has really sturdy fans. These are pretty light, but the silk is okay. The silk is good, which means I can iron them and then they will look more expensive than they are. So when you get them, usually they are very tightly wound and this is how dancers tend to rewind them after dancing with them. But then, they will get creased like this when you open them. They will be kind of like this. You see the lines and you can dance with them like this. It's not a problem. <clears throat> they will be open and they will move, but it's not the same. So we will iron them. Yes, yes, yes. I will do one and then I'll show you both. I hope it shows on film. And then if we have time left, I'll do the second one, but it's the same technique. So I probably will just be doing one iron. So. Okay. Uh, ironing one silk veil. So if you open them, if, if you get them, they're like this, undo them, voila, however you like, and never roll them up like this again. <laughs> you can roll them up around, let me see if I have it here. You will need, and everyone has this, I think, a tube like this from a uh, Kitchen paper, kitchen paper, I don't know the English name, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Patunet! And you, you close your fans if you want to transport them and you put them both inside so the, the fan is itself will not open. And then when you have iron silk, I will show you later, you put it around very loosely, so not tightly wound because then you will have all this ironing for nothing. So let's begin. Let me find my left fan. I will, I will also make a little tutorial on how to find the right fan, how to grip it. I want to do that today. But first we will start with the ironing. I think now it's hot. I've talked long enough. 
Um, hi, Rosemary. So, what is going on right now? I am ironing, ironing my fans, a new set, so you will see the difference, hopefully. And what you need to do is have your ironing board ready, open the fan as far as you can, and for some there might be like this little extra bit of silk. It doesn't matter if it's on top or not, it, it's not important. What is important is that you iron up, up to where the fan ends, but not on it, because then your glue will melt and then you have to re-glue them. Yes, so you just drape them here. I'll do the corners first. Open it up. I'm a lefty, so I have to, I have to cheat a bit. And then you iron. The iron goes on top. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And I'm holding my fan and wafting it so, so that I can move the silk. The most tricky bit is the part around the fan itself. After that, it becomes easier and goes quicker. So I kind of move it around, shake it up, and go over it again. Because the fan is new, the creases are a bit deeper than normally. So you might have to do this, the part around the fan, twice. I hope you can see this. So I don't touch the wood. I can even put it upright so I don't get tempted. <laughs> and I try to decrease, decrease area around the silk. Maybe you can see it already. It's, it becomes more shiny, it flows better and it catches more air and it opens and closes more easily. So that's three big reasons why to do this. Also it doesn't take much time. It doesn't take much time at all as you can see. I'm just waving the fan, the part that goes on the ironing board. I have to think of my English and iron <laughs> and speak at the same time. And if I get a crease in it, oh, something fell. If I get a crease in it, I just re-iron, so it's no big deal. Once you have like the base done, you can, this is the tricky bit, maybe I'll do like this so you can see it. Then it becomes easier, you will have one hand free. So once this first part is ironed, as long as it takes to get the fan across, you gently lay it across the back. So now it's hanging here. So for those who just tuned in, this is my fan. I iron the first bit, I hang it across and I open the silk. So now I can use two hands and it's a lot easier suddenly for this part. So I hope you're doing it with me. I know you cannot type, <laughs> but <laughs> ironing your silk. Hi Johanna! Hi Janice! Glennis, Fabienne, Antje, Annalene, welcome, welcome to my silk ironing party. So this is how I celebrate. <laughs> it was my birthday this week on Monday. As you can see, I'm a party animal. I, um, I bought myself a T-Rex suit, as some of you might have seen. And <laughs> this, this was for no reason, for no special reason. I just always wanted to have one. Now I do, and I'm really happy. And what I've been using it for is for fun, to scare my husband and also to promote uh, the videos of our Dance for Children charity channel. And what this is, it's really fun. We have a bunch of good online teachers who donated videos. Hi, Catherine! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You'll feel all zen. This is my zen time with my fans and my veils. If I get to iron my silk, I know I am well prepared. So for me also this gives me a, a moment of peace and I can think about life and things or my, my dance, anything I want to prepare. And also I tell my students, and it's true because I believe it, it's a kind of bonding between you and your prop. You are giving it some attention, some energy, and in return it will give you good dances back. Yeah, And if you believe it, it's true. <laughs> Hi Caroline! So we are ironing our silk. This one is really creased because it's still new and a bit stiff. Once you have ironed your silk, doesn't matter if it's fan veils or um, a normal veil, and you want to just refresh it a bit, you can also waft it through a, a bathroom. If you've taken a long shower and it's steamed up, just waving the silk around there without, without it getting stuck to a wet wall. That will also refresh the silk and make it shiny and if there's only a little bit of creasing going on, it's enough. It's like you're steaming it in the room. So this has saved me in the 
traveling circumstances where I didn't have an iron and your hotel did not have one. Yes, <laughs> my mom is bringing her to iron stuff. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you can just watch me iron. That's also fine. Also, you can get a steamer, but the steamers, I think they are not necessary if you can do this ironing at home or get an iron at the hotel, wherever you are. Usually that's enough. That's enough. You don't have to have both gadgets. But some people like the steamer because they can also do their costumes, which is, which is maybe a boom. Anyway, I'm almost at the end. Let me see. Uh, that's less than 10 minutes. <laughs> yes, I extra matched my outfit with the fan veils. I love color matches and also afterwards, if I'm wearing a certain color, it helps me remember what I was filming. So my videos don't get too muddled up if I put them online. So where were we? Yes, for Dance for Children, we have teachers who donated instructional videos. We put them all on one channel. It's called uh, gumroad.com slash d4c. And there, people can just um, download the videos and donate a small amount, five euros or more per video, and dance with them forever. You can download them and the donation will go to a very good cause, helping protecting children. So that's what we do for Dance for Children, and that's what I used the Zilla suit for. So that was a long sentence. <laughs> okay, I think we are ready, we're good to go. We have one fan iron. I'm going to go through, I'm going to pick it up, because now the fan is on the floor on the other side. So that's how I do it. There's no magic, <laughs> it's not fancy, and sometimes I do this really quickly. But it's enough, it's enough. You can maybe see already with the you know, light that it's more shiny. There's still a few creases, so I'll do the middle bit again. I was talking a lot in this part. So wherever you still have creases, this is only the first time, you know, if, if they are already ironed, it'll go even quicker. You grab the iron again, and you just go over it again. And if you get new fans and they are very long, I will show you how to measure them. Usually, if it's silk, you can just cut it and it will not, um, how to say, it will not fray. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to hem it at the end. I like it when it's not hemmed, so it moves a bit more freely. So, if you look at my fan belts from very up close, they are li a little bit crooked, because sometimes the cutting, I do it fast and with normal scissors. But if you have good scissors, it's even better. <laughs> also, if you are in a hurry and you want to do something while you're here, you can practice your shimmies, no problem or any other isolation. isolation. It's already hard to talk though and iron. Okay, so there's a bit more creasing here. The one off very tight and then it's good to go. What else? What else is going on? Yes, I have a free push-up challenge, a six-day challenge that you might have seen come by. I've put the link up in there. You can join it anytime. You just sign up and you get six emails from me telling you to do one good push-up but the difficult kind with the elbows in per day for six days and then we check how you feel afterwards and what the effect is on your posture because i have noticed that this push-up we do it for a sword class and for taekwondo it does help me to open up my upper body and this also helps for fan veil so it's all in preparations for our upcoming fan veil boost series which i have three spots left for so if you want to study fan veils with me in depth and work on your strength your posture your arms, your movements that are underneath the fan veil work, join me. You can still sign up. It's four weeks, three short sessions per week, 30 minutes, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And if you cannot join it live, you get all the recordings forever. So even if you cannot be there with me live, you can see the Facebook sessions like this one, or you can join me on Zoom. If, even if it's only one of the 12 sessions, I think it's still worth it because you can ask me questions. So if you like fan veils, Join the Fanville Boost series. Yes. Okay, I've said everything. It is ironed. It's now complete. I'm at the end. Let's test. Let's test. So if you're ironing with me, you can keep going or you can join me for the test if you are ready. So I have to be careful that I don't step on it. Let me unplug it. Put it away before I, before I start waving my fans around. So that's one fan done. Let me move this too, so I don't bump into it. And it doesn't 
disturb your view. I'm still here. I hope she's still here. So here we go. This is the iron fan. Still a little bit creasy, but hopefully you can see it's more shiny. And I'm moving very lightly. Closing. <laughs> Closing and throwing. Closing and opening. Closing and opening. And maybe you can hear it. Because they are new, they are a bit rough. Um, and that's why I always recommend opening and closing your fans if they are new a couple of times. So we're going into the tutorial now. Here, the before and after. So before looks like this when it's closed. Looks like this when it's ironed. Yes. If I move it, this one and this one. Both move, but I like this one better because it catches the light more. And if I open it, it might not show as much. See, this one, I almost didn't get it to open. This one is ironed. This one is not. This one is not. Can you see the difference? <laughs> I hope so. I feel the difference and I think that's even more important. So if it is ironed, it doesn't feel like so much work to make it move and to keep it open. And I'm a lefty. This is my left hand. So this is supposed to be the one that works better. So let's open and close, open and close. Now, what to do if you have new fans and you've ironed them to prepare your hands? Let's do this together. This is my little mini routine. If I have not done fan veils for a while, my hands get rusty and it, it kind of hurts here and your muscles get cramped. So the first thing to do is just to open the hands, work the extensors. So I just saw the difference. Good, good, good. Because I am back there and I can't, could not see if it works. Yes, you get. If even only one person is convinced by this video, I am happy because it is so important. And I see, I see a lot of performances with beautiful fan veil work, but I can see in, from the audience that it's not ironed. And then I wish for the dancer to know how much difference it makes. As you could see, it was 10 minutes work, 15 if you go really detailed and do both, but uh, you, have, you have this knowledge forever. Also, in photo shoots, if they are ironed, they will catch the light differently. And you know, some dancers like me, they will know. <laughs> they will know if you iron them just because of how, how it looks. See, I only have to do a very light bit. Okay, let's move together. Let's move together. Yes, iron silk. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So now for the hands, that which moves the silk also makes a difference. So my favorite, favorite exercise, and I do this also before we do sword class because we have to grip a lot. And that's what makes fans a bit tricky in the beginning. You are trying to hold on to it um, and you can get tired because it's a new movement for your hands. You don't want to drop the fails, but you also don't want to crush them. Yes, the shininess, that's what sold me. And you know, on stage, it's even more different with the really bright lights. I can turn it up a bit, maybe. <laughs> I'm blinded, but maybe this will show you even more. So you can see this fan, it almost opens by itself now. And this one, no. This is how much it opens by itself, with and without ironing. That's the ironed one. No ironed one. <laughs> I'm an advertise, advertising for ironing. And you know, this is a good thing because it is within your power. I have to turn the light a bit down because I'm starting to get blinded. Uh, this is within your power. Even if you're a beginner fan veil dancer or a beginner veil dancer, ironing you can do. You can do it because you can do it at home, you can prepare and you can practice the ironing. Then the silk will move better, you will feel better, you will have, have more confidence, so it changes the dancing from the start. So it's, it's really magical. I wanted to do a video especially for this. I, I apologize because it's not much dancing, but I think it is important. Yes, oh, you signed up. Welcome, Rosa Marie. So we have only two spots left for 
Fanville Boost and we're going to have a lot of fun because uh, I know a bunch of us are new to Fanvales or have not danced with it in a while. And uh, for me, starting with Fanvales from the beginning and making dances with them with a little knowledge, that's what made me fall in love with it. Especially because um, you don't need to do so much. If it is a prop with silk, it moves by itself. You do a little flick of the hand and all the rest is you. You make the magic. You don't need to have five years experience with these uh, to make it look beautiful. You can work on all the things and then do a little bit of fans just to make the magic happen. But the magic is in you. You don't, you don't have to wait, I would say, to make dances with something new if you work on the basic, on the fundamentals. And that's what I love to do with these series. So, so back to the hands, <laughs> back to the hands. You just circle your thumbs Little circles and big circles. Little circles and big circles. Little circles and big circles. And I'm making small movements and big movements because you want to have the fine motor skills as well as the rough motor skills. Other side the same. Small and big. And small and big. Small and big. This is only a few seconds per finger, but it will work the muscles across your arm in different ranges. Okay, and now we'll, we'll fan the hands. What I'm doing is I'm opening and then closing. It's like a stretch between the fingers. And as you can see, my fingertips, I reach, I extend them all the way out. And now the other way, so I started with the pinky. Now I start with the, or the thumb. This way you're opening and closing all the little muscles across here and across here. Now make fists, make them strong, and then open. Open, open and shake out. Little stretch, very easy. I use, um, you can do finger to finger stretches, but I use the pressure of my hand to release any pressure points here. So I like to press with my finger and then massage my palm of the hand as well as stretch the other finger. So I just find spots <laughs> and I kind of massage and stretch at the same time. You can see my fingertips do this. And that's something I had to work on. In the beginning, my fingertips were like this and it was the max stretch. And I like when hands can go out, so they extend. So that's why I do this stretch. I press and I feel here where I need it the most. Yes, Miko, it makes such a difference. <clears throat> the ironing, it's, it's a world changer. It's a world changer. And it's 10 minutes of your life. Hello, hi Cindy, welcome. So now you can just extend all the fingers. And um, little hand waves is good for dance, as well as a preparation for fan veils. And then the wrists, you circle, if you can see this, I try to keep my fingers in one spot. So if you can see here, and the wrists go up and down beyond it, but I don't move the fingers, I move the wrists. The fingers stay at the same level. If you do that, you have more of a stretch here around the joints. There's a lot of bones here and you want them all to move and shift and side to side. Let's shake out. Then circle the elbow joint. So this is really quick. This is like a warm-up you can do anytime. And then rotate the shoulder. Let me go back. So we can do both. Straighten out the arms. Now I need more light. Voila. Straighten out the arms extend, try to reach beyond the screen. And now you turn towards one hand, the hand floats in the air, you turn towards it and the palm goes up and even to the back. The other side, where you turn away, the palm goes down and then you switch. If you had my tip drop with my husband, we did um, some desk stretches. This one was called the Egyptian. And I like it because it works the fascia, so the connective tissue, as well as the muscles, in a spiral across to the center, over to the other side. So every fiber across this whole area will work. So that's what I do for my body. The fingers, I move them, I stretch them, I extend and contract. I do hand waves, maybe even reverse, and I circle the wrists. Then I do this Egyptian. So that's all I need to be refreshed and I shake out everything. Let me see for time. Yes, we are still on time. Then for the fans, I have a little routine that I do to break them in. So if they are new, 
as you might have seen, the first time I opened them, it flew out of my hand, <laughs> which is not what you want to have happen on stage. What I do is I open and close them. It will help me practice my grip to make it less forced, because if I'm not used to it, I might grip it so strongly that I get tired. Um, and I open and close them because then the fans become more smooth. So I'm practicing the action, the grip, and I'm breaking in the fan. So these are three, three reasons to first iron the silk and then just open and close them. So that's my, my homework for those of you who are doing the Silk Veil Boost series starting on Monday. We have two spots left. If you want to join me, sign up soon <laughs> so you don't miss it. You want to find first, find out first, which one is your left and right fan. So what I do is I grab one, one of the things, staves, I don't know they were in English, I'm sorry. I just grab one and I pinch it between my index finger and thumb and then I let it drop. And if it opens a quarter, see this one's not ironed, it doesn't open quite as far, but if it opens when I move my hand, this one's ironed, it opens all the way then it's the correct one. If I were to switch hands, switch you. <laughs> I have to manually close the non-ironed one. <clears throat> Let me see, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yes, if I were to switch hands, so now I have the, the wrong one in my hands and I pinch just one staff and the other one and I shake it will not open. So if this happens on stage, you're trying to open it and it won't work, switch your hands while you're dancing. Pinch again, just whichever one comes out on top, and it should open. Yes, so you have one, doesn't open. It might have to go the other way, and voila. So let's first find out which fan is which, and grab it then. So once you have it in the correct hand, you grab which one is on top, you let it fall and it should already start to open. As you can see here, this is what I call the back end of the fan. I try to envelope this in my hand. If you have little hands and big fan, <laughs> it's tricky. These I buy especially because the fans are not too big. So what I do is I pinch as close to this part as I can while still having my hand around this. So what I need to be able to do to open it 180 degrees, which is what you want, is you see the, the nail here and the back edge. You want to be able to push it open with your pinky. So then it's 160 degrees, 180 degrees more. Mm, excuse me, 180 degrees. You want to have it open completely. I don't even need to use any fingers. I am using my thumb and the pressure of my, my hand, as well as my pinky, maybe even ring finger. So like this, I have two fingers left. You can put them on here, but you don't have to make a fist and grab and hold the fan like this so it doesn't close. If it closes and you have it ironed, all you need to do is move it up like this. If one side is up, you need the power of your pinky and a bit of stretch in your hand, that's enough to hold it. So I am only holding with my thumb and these two. And my index finger, that's only to help to direct it. So the least amount of fingers, as is my philosophy for a regular veil. Now I'll try it with a non-ironed one. It will take me a bit more fiddling in the beginning to get it to open. So I might have to use my thumb under this one, press it open, use my pinky on this side, press it open. It'll work. It's not the same as this one, but it'll work in a pinch. Hi, Poppy. Hi, hi. Hi, Joyce. <laughs> so I'm demonstrating iron silk versus non-iron silk, how well it opens. So once you have the grip, you just practice this. Let it go and get back to it. Let it go and get back to it. When I let go, I use the veil pinch. And once I have it open, I can release here. And this this mostly is a matter of getting used to it. If you do this a little bit every day, so you have until Monday, it'll be a lot easier on the hands than doing everything at once on Sunday. So start today, just try to open it and release, open and release. First looking at it and then not looking at it, 
but just checking if it's open. I feel when it's open because the edge hits my lower arm. So I try to have contact here, also in there. So what I need to do sometimes is move my wrist a bit. Back to the side, open it and connect it to your arm. Yes. From there, we will close by flipping the palm up and we will open so from here. I will have to have my thumb on the side. These fingers are the ones that will open it once it falls open. So what I do is I, I flip it. I have this veil pinch. Then I use my pinky to open 180 and then I'm free again here. So that's the sequence. Let me show you with one hand. If you want to practice having both hands be even, you start with the non-dominant hand, the bad hand, <laughs> the less comfortable hand. You do that one first. Open. 180. I insist that you do this every time you open the fan. Do this to get your hands used to the feeling. Yes, so my index finger is not doing anything. Once I have it open, I don't use it. I only use it for the initial flip. Then I will reverse the movement. I will hold my index finger here and release my pinky. If I do that, it will fall and close itself. So that's what you want to practice. You want around your wrist to let it fall open, get used to using momentum instead of force. Then use your pinky and maybe ring finger for the last bit and then you can release. That's one. Now to close it, reverse. You want the fan to close itself. So I have to flip the silk. The weight of the silk will close it. So do this in slow motion first. I'm holding it like this. And if it's ironed, it will close better. Then open. Open, you let it fall. <laughs> Don't let it really drop. You let it fall, but hold the pinch. And then you open. And this will become more fluid as you do it a couple of times. To close it, let it fall because you have to let go of the pinky to let it close. Let go, only the pinch and open with your pinky here. Reverse, open that hand. Yes, yeah, so that was slow motion. If you get used to it, try doing it all at once. So I did open, open fully. Let it go, close fully. When I want to close fully, what I do is I snap it close. As you can see, my hand, there's a bit of space under the edge of the fan so that my hand can cup it and grab. So I close, I open, I close, I open. I do this five times in total with my less comfortable hand and it will make the fan more smooth because it needs a couple of times before it opens better. Then you go to your favorite hand. I am both silk so, and you open. Let me show you slowly. <laughs> Sorry, I have a table with stuff here. <laughs> Things might fall. I open again with the pinch. I let the gravity do its work. Then I use my pinky for the rest. I rotate again here. As soon as I let go of the pinky, it will close. So it's about letting go. You don't have to force it open. You don't have to force it closed. Simply use the veil pinch just only the outer one and let it fall, let it open. Then you add the little trick. This is when, I, when I'm cramped and holding it. This is when I'm relaxing. I, I simply relax everything and it will close. Here, if I'm holding it, it will not open. If I relax, it will. If I hold it, it will not close. If I relax, it will. So here, Relax, relax, just simply hold the pinch and yes. Once you have that, you understand what's going on, you can do five quick ones. Let it fall on the hand, open it with the pinky. I insist you do this. <laughs> close, that's two. Close, that's three. Close, that's four. Close, that's five. And then you go back to your non-dominant hand and you do five more. And this is how you balance it. You do non-dominant hand, five. Dominant hand, five. 
non-dominant hand five. And this is how we do it in uh, martial arts. We practice our least favorite side first, then we go to the favorite side. That's three. And this way you balance it. So you don't have to think about it. You're just repeating, switching and repeating. And then your body will even out and it will make I'm doing now more because this side feels so much better because it's ironed. Maybe you can hear it and it opens with more speed. That's this one. <laughs> it gets stuck and I have to use more force. So it might just have been the ironing. So you see me struggle a bit more on this side. I'm now doing more than just five on each side. Uh, <laughs> just, just so you can see the difference. So my prescription, prescription, circle the fingers, small and big, non-dominant hand first, dominant hand, non-dominant hand, hand waves, you can do both at the same time, then wrist up and down, if it feels the same, both at the same time, wrist circles, if one hand feels less comfortable, Start with that one, then do the other, then do both. Um, and then the <laughs> least comfortable one again. Then your silk, after you've ironed it, open and close. You can start with the non-dominant hand. Let's do it together. Open, close. Five times, close. <laughs> open, I have to stay in view. Open, close, I think that's five. Then, your favorite hand. So you can open it upright or open it like this. Both works. Closing is always palm up. Palm down is open. Palm up is closing. Palm down. Palm open. I'll do a slower one so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not doing much. Your movements will become more economic after doing it. Thank you. <laughs> so now, uh, where was I? I did non-dominant hand, dominant hand. Non-dominant hand again. I hope you've ironed it. <laughs> if not, try this again with an iron so you will love it more. Four. And palm up is closed. Palm down is open. Palm up is closed. Even palm straight. Even when it's not ironed. It will open if you relax. Yes. Then, if you've done non-dominant, dominant, non-dominant, non so three sets, you can start trying both. And this will show you if you are already even or if one hand does need... Hi! Hi, hi, Poppy, thank you. If you are uneven, doing both at the same time will tell you. And then you know to do the one, two, three a couple more times. So let's continue. Try both variations. So one where the fan stays upright and one where the fan comes down. So you'll get used to the angles already. So let's do that again. Fan upright, palms up, fans down, palms up. Fan upright, palms up, fans down. And once you have that, we'll do one final exercise. And that is for getting you used to the, <laughs> sorry, I'm stepping on my wheel, <gasps> getting you used to the flutter, the flutter, which is the movement uh, used most musically. So we will do big swoops, we will do turns, but the flutter is the thing that you can drill and practice and make more comfortable and also the one that shows if you are uneven, like with the opening closing. The same thing applies there. Once you have the technique, and my basic tip is to start, if you start doing this, to start with connection. Open the fan completely, connect it to your arm, and then instead of what I sometimes see doing the whole arm, which is very tiring, think of rotation from the elbow down. So these bones are made to rotate, <laughs> that rhymes. And if you use that, it's the most biomechanically economic way to move the whole fan. So I'm not moving my shoulder at all. This is quiet. I'm using the rotation, the way my bones are made to move, rotation of my lower arm. So I'm not even using my wrist. It is the full lower arm and simply rotating this can make a really big movement. The bigger the movement, the slower the... Okay, 
let me make this more beautiful <laughs> do. It's my right hand, my non-dominant hand, but it has the fan I end. So the same effort. You see that the fan opens so far that it almost moves by itself. So iron them first. Open them completely. If you don't open them, you will lose this bit, catch less air, and it will look like a, like a smaller and sadder fan <laughs> if you open it almost completely. It makes me unhappy. So <laughs> open it completely and let my heart sing. It's only a bit more effort in the beginning. It'll become natural. So train yourself, even if you're, especially if you're a beginner with fans, to do this little pinky extra. It makes a world of difference when you're moving. So you want it to be completely 180 as much as possible. Rotate from the elbow down so the whole arm is rotating. It might be a bit tiring in the beginning, but trust me, it's less tiring than rotating the whole arm and it's less tiring than using this forehand, which is already busy trying to hold the fan open. So you want to use the least amount of fingers, only the tension that you need to open it. It will become less and less. So let it go and redo every now and then because you will get stronger also. And then use a rotation. And trust that the silk will move. You don't need too much. If you want to give it more motion, you can still use your upper body as well. But for the flutter, I recommend practicing this rotation here. It'll get, make you less tired and give you a bit more control than using the arms. <laughs> flutter drill, that's the final bit of this session. I'm going over time, but I think it's worth it. Flutter drill, if you are uneven, if one hand is more tricky, the non-dominant hand starts, you open completely, you do one, two, three, four, five flutters down, then one, two, three, four, flutters down, flutters front, flutters up. The only difference is where my elbow points when I start. So flutters down, my elbow starts pointing back and I rotate, that's flutters down. And it, the arm position doesn't matter that much. You just flutter to get biomechanically used to a rhythm. Then to the front, and two, three, four, five, you just count. Up, maybe a bit more tricky, you may have to go a bit slower, four and five, and a bit bigger in the movement to keep it floating, two, three, four, five, okay. That's one set. Then you go to your favorite hand, one, two, three, four, five, down, one, two, three, four, five, front and up, one, two, three, four, five, up. I have to make them a bit slower, a bit, bit bigger. Then you go back to the non-dominant hand. One, two, three, four, five. You can do that a bit faster or slow. One and two and three and four and five, but you want it to be even. One and two and three and four and five. Very tricky if it's not ironed. And now you can try both. Let me go back. One and two and three and four and five. So it's not rocket science. You've become better simply by practicing but with practicing with with brains you want to know what you are doing and why you're doing it i am practicing all these directions and left and right separately to make my arms more even and to get used to any rhythm if i can control the rhythm then i can adapt it four five and up one and two and three and four and five. If I do this with music, I will be kind of glued to the rhythm of the music. That's why I sometimes like to practice with no music. In my mind, I can more easily slow down and speed up and choose which tempo I want. And then if I have a song and it's faster or slower, I simply adapt. Hi Nadine, hi Moria. Welcome, welcome. Some new names, new to me names. Okay, so where are we? I will do one song and do a little drill, but I think the most, most important message of this whole class is one, iron the silk. <laughs> Two, practice your non-dominant hand and dominant hand separately to non-dominant, dominant, non-dominant. Non Just a set of three and it will even it out over time. And that's all you need to do. If you feel frustrated that one hand is stronger, you can fix it. I am a lefty and I'm doing all my Korean sword stuff with the right hand, which is how it's taught. 
and I am able to do it. I suffered in the beginning a little, but now my left and right is the same. And that's because my left, I don't practice it, and the right, I practice it. So you can, you can even it out. Okay, thank you, Priska. Thank you so much. Hi, hello, Nadine. So that's all it takes. And then you practice those things that you want to look the same. Again, non-dominant hand, dominant hand, non-dominant hand. Then together, this is your test as well as your actual practice. So your warm-up doesn't need to be much, but if you do the things that you want to make better, it's more efficient. So let's do one song together with fan veils, if you have them ironed, <laughs> even if you have only one ironed like me. And we'll try some basic moves. The ones that I like the most, the ones that I learned the first, it's enough already to make a full dance. So you have your fans. If they are closed, Point them up, fingers relaxed. Let's bring them behind the head, elbows up. So you're coming the upper body. Hi, Anne Cecilia, welcome. Let's do a little PA opening. So I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Pointing the fans in. Hi, Joyce. Yes, I love it too. Bring the fans a bit to the front. Sleeves low in the shoulders. Crossing, opening, turning the upper body. So I'm twisting, pointing the fans down, relaxing the wrists. Let's turn, keeping the wrists down. And now, what I will do during the turn is bring my elbows out and my fingers point down and I'll bring the fans up and then I open so I did this fingertips down wrists up elbows up and then I flip at the end let's do this on the other side circle okay we'll open the fans one two Bring them down, a little flutter. Down. The outer fan, I push it to the front, and I bring it to the back, and push it to the front, and bring it to the back. Open. Twisting the upper body. Those are just tuned in, you can see one of my fans is ironed, the other one is not. <laughs> see if you can spot which one. Now both. So I'm doing a big figure eight with both arms. Back of the hands together. Back of the hands together. Let's do flipping back, flipping back. And flip and flip. So on one hand. This one really doesn't work. This one, yes. Ironed. Not ironed. Ironed. Back again. Thank you. So that's my little fan veil 